In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a handful of 14500 lights and comparing their unique features, their outputs, throw distances, beam patterns, and other specs. So if you're in the market for a new pocket carry friendly EDC light, this video will show you a few different options and help you decide which one is best for you. We're going to be checking out eight different lights in this video, and if you want to jump to a particular light, there's timestamps in the description and also links to purchase these lights, which will help me grow the channel as well. We're going to start off with what many enthusiasts consider to be the best value 14500 EDC flashlight currently available and after spending a few weeks with it I can definitely see why. This is the Lumintop FWAA and this one has a blue aluminum alloy body but you can also pick one up in copper or a handful of other different titanium finishes. It has a removable two-way pocket clip and a tail switch and the light runs on Andrew 2 UI which by default is set to smooth ramping but it also has step modes, lockout, and a variety of other modes. It has a smooth bezel, TIR optics, and this version of the FWAA comes with three SST20 4000K emitters, but you can also pick it up with a Cree XPG3 or a Nietzsche 219C in a variety of different color temperatures. The specs on the SST20 version of the FWAA are not stated, but the max output with the Cree is 1400 lumens and 1200 lumens with the Nietzsche, with an intensity of around 2000 candela and a throw distance of about 90 meters. It delivers a high CRI that's a little bit on the warm side and has a large hotspot that only stands out slightly and a really wide floody beam angle and it definitely has the biggest slot of the lights here which makes it really well suited for walking around. If you do need to look at something slightly further away the FWAA can still stretch to further distances and overall it's a well balanced light for close range use. Real quick before we get to the next light if you're enjoying the video and like these beam shots be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Next up we have a relatively new light to the 14500 class which is the Ace Beam Rider RX and it's been gaining a lot of popularity and for good reason. This is the silver colored stainless steel version but you can also pick it up in a variety of other colors as well as aluminum and titanium. Besides the excellent performance, many people are fascinated by this light's mechanical pocket clip sliding mechanism, which not only gives you access to unscrewing the head of the light, but it's also a pretty cool fidget toy. There's a metal clicky switch on the tail, which gives you access to four different output modes plus a strobe, and this light comes with a 920 mAh 14500 battery with a built-in USB-C charging port. The Rider RX has a smooth bezel, a short and smooth aluminum reflector, and has a Nichia 219F emitter. The Ace Beam Rider RX has a max output of 650 lumens and a max beam throw distance of 96 meters. It can run on this mode for about 2 minutes before stepping down to 450 lumens for another few minutes and then down to 350 for about 55 minutes. The Nietzsche emitter produces a neutral 5000K color temperature and a CRI that's greater than 90. The Rider RX has a mid-size hotspot and a relatively wide flood and it really delivers a well-balanced beam that's not only good for walking around, but also good for looking at things a bit further off in the distance, making it one of the more versatile options in the lineup and a pretty great all-around light. This is the Lumintop E05C, and this light has a very unique design with a lot of utility with dual sources of illumination, which provide a good balance for mid-range and short distance use. A single rubber side switch gives you access to 14 different output modes, and beneath that, there's a white rectangle on the tube, which houses four Nichia NCSLE 17 emitters that deliver a very soft and diffused beam that's perfect for hands for use. The E05C can stand on its tail, and it's also magnetized, so you can easily configure it in an optimal position for hands for use. There's also a rubber cover, which houses a micro USB input for charging and a removable pocket clip as well. The bezel is smooth, it has a medium sized orange peel reflector and a Cree XPL HI emitter. The Lumintop E05C's primary emitter has a max output of 550 lumens, an intensity of 6400 candela, and a max throw distance of 160 meters. This color temperature is on the cooler side, and this light has one of the more intense hotspots, so it's going to be better for mid range use. The beam angle is on the more narrow side, so it's not going to be as good as some of the other lights for walking on this mode, but it does get the job done. The E05C's auxiliary emitters have a max output of 260 lumens and they deliver a very wide and even beam pattern that's great for walking around or illuminating an indoor area. This mode isn't the best for distance, but the primary emitter is, and together they are a pretty useful combo. Next up we have the Sofern SP10 Pro, and this is one of the most budget friendly options in the lineup. I've reviewed a ton of different Sofern lights in the past year, and they typically come in at about half the price or less as some of their competitors, and are definitely a brand to check out if you want to save some money, but still get a very good quality light. The SP10 Pro has some crisscross knurling on the tube, 
a removable two-way pocket clip, and a single metal side switch with Android 2. And it's also the first Android light on the market with the new a 1616 microcontroller. It has a smooth bezel, a medium-sized orange peel reflector, and a Samsung LH351D emitter, which has a CRI that's greater than 90. The SP10 Pro has a max output of 900 lumens, an intensity of 3,451 candela, and a throw distance of 119 meters. Its color temperature is pretty close to neutral, and this is another well-balanced light with a mid-sized hotspot and a decent-sized flood. This is going to be one of the best options if you want to have a light that can see a bit further than many of the others, but that's still reasonably well suited for walking around with. Up next we have another budget friendly option which is the Convoy T3, and Convoy is another brand that offers excellent value for the price. The T3 comes in a bunch of different colors and it has a spiral knurling pattern along with a removable pocket clip. This light has a rubber click tail switch and four main output modes, but it does have some sub options for different mode sets that include some additional modes, including a strobe. The light has a smooth bezel, a deep orange pill style reflector, and this version has a Nietzsche 219B emitter with a 3000K warm color temperature, but there is an excellent selection of other emitter options to choose from as well. The Convoy T3 has a max output of around 300 lumens with this emitter, and even though it's one of the lowest output lights in the lineup, it's still not a bad light for close to mid-range use. I found myself buying more and more warm lights lately, and I'm a really big fan because they're much more discreet and easier to look at. The T3 has a mid-size hotspot and a relatively narrow beam angle, and it's actually pretty similar to the Sofern SP10 Pro, and because it has less output, it's not going to be as good for longer distances, but for close range use, this light is ideal. Next up, we have one of the most popular lights in the lineup, which is the Olight i5R EOS. This light has a black body with a helix style double knurling pattern on the tube and a nice blue removable two-way pocket clip. And there's a handful of other color and body material options on the market as well. There's a rubber clicky switch on the tail with access to high and low mode. This light comes with a 1420 milliamp hour battery with a convenient USB-C input for charging. It has a smooth bezel, TIR optics, and comes with a high performance cool white emitter. The Olight i5R EOS has a max output of 350 lumens, an intensity of 1038 candela, and a max throw distance of, of 54 meters. It can run at this level for about 10 minutes while dropping down to a 43% output where it can run for another 170 minutes. There is a very minimal hotspot here, but it's definitely much more of a floodlight and it's not going to be as great for long distance use, but it is a perfect beam pattern for walking around with. Next we're going to transition to some thrower lights best suited for long distance use. And up first we have the Lumentop GTA. The GTA's tube has some crisscross knurling and a removable pocket clip and has a design that's very similar to the Lumentop tool. There's a rubber tail switch which gives the user access to four different output modes plus a strobe mode. The GTA has a very large head relative to the rest of the lights here and it's got a crenulated bezel, a deep wide aluminum reflector, and an OSRAM emitter. The Lumentop GTA has a max output of 550 lumens, a peak intensity of 85,000 candela, and a max throw distance of 585 meters, and it will run on this mode for about 45 minutes while slowly ramping down. The GTA has a much more intense hotspot compared to all of the lights we've looked at previously, and it's doing a great job of lighting up the field lights off in the distance. There's also some flood, so you can see some of the area surrounding the hotspot, which might make it easier to search for something. The last light we're going to be taking a look at today is something very unusual, and that's the Lumentop Ant-Man Thor Mini LEP flashlight. For those of you that aren't familiar, LEP stands for Laser Excited Phosphor, and it's much different than the traditional LED flashlights we looked at previously, and they're very small lights that can throw compact beams of light a really long distance. The Ant-Man has a simple tube with some crisscross knurling and a removable two-way pocket clip, and a rubber rear forward clicky switch which gives you access to a single output mode. It has a smooth bezel, a turbo glow bezel ring, and this is a shine through style LEP with a 6 watt max laser emitter. The Lumentop Ant-Man has a max output of 165 lumens, a peak intensity of 87,025 candela, and a max throw distance of 590 meters. And it will run on this output for about 50 to 60 minutes depending on the battery that you use. The beam is very concentrated and the hotspot is very similar to what we saw in the GTA, but there's no spill. And this is going to be one of the best options if you want to point something out at long range. If you want to check out some more LEPs, I did a video comparing six different ones with some much more intense hotspots, and there's a link down in the description below. 
Here's a side-by-side -side look at these lights on turbo, and for this shot, I have left out the two Lumatop throwers. The Lumatop FWAA has the highest output and definitely the widest beam angle of the bunch, followed in beam angle by the Olight, and the rest of the lights have a pretty similar beam profile. Here's a look at all of these lights indoors, and you can really see the difference between the spotlights, the floodlights, and the more well-balanced lights. While some are definitely better than others, all of the lights are doing a decent job of illuminating the garage except for the Ant-Man, which is too concentrated and is really only usable outdoors. For the medium mode comparison, I went ahead and picked a mode with a decent balance of output and runtime that I think people would find themselves using most often. The Lumatop FWAA has smooth ramping, which allows you to adjust the brightness to a specific level to meet your needs. This is probably the best beam pattern for the circumstances because it's really easy to see where you're walking and everything is well illuminated as long as you're pointing the light in the general direction that you're walking. The Ace Beam Rider RX has a 70 lumens mode with a max runtime of 3 hours and 8 minutes and this is just enough light to be comfortable walking around with on a trail to see where you're going but not the greatest if you're trying to spot something out a little bit further away. The Lumentop EO5C's primary emitter has a mid mode with a 150 lumen output and a 3 hour and 20 minute runtime. And this is another mode where we're going to see the light ramp down pretty quickly, but it is one of the better modes if you want to be able to see something at mid range but still preserve your battery life and walk around with on a trail comfortably. Now I've got the auxiliary lights on and the wide beam angle is really great for this type of use. And even though I can't see very far, what I can see in front of me is very well lit. The Sofern SP10 Pro has a 70 lumen mode with a max runtime of 9 hours and 46 minutes. And this is one of the lower mid modes and it does slowly ramp down, but the runtime is actually really good. And this is one of the best lights if you need to walk around in the dark for many hours at night. The Convoy T3 has a 30% mode, which should be about 90 lumens. And the runtime is not stated, but my guess is that it'll be around two and a half hours. This is actually a really nice output level for this purpose because it's bright enough to see where I'm walking and pretty good at illuminating things a bit further away. The Lumentop GTA has a 55 lumen mode with a max runtime of six hours. And this wouldn't be a great mode to use if you're in pitch darkness because it's tough to see where you're walking, but it is a very handy mode if you want to spot something off in the distance. Now we're going to be taking a look at each of these lights on their lowest output modes and give you a better idea of what their maximum runtime is. The Lumentop FWAA's moonlight mode specs are not stated, but it does appear to be right around two lumens and it should last for at least a few days on this level. It's slightly overpowered for this use case, but it's not bad, but it would be nice to see it a bit dimmer. The Ace Beam Rider RX has a 7 lumen low mode with a max runtime of 53 hours, running at 14500, and it does seem to be slightly overpowered for up close use. It would be nice to see a longer runtime with a 14500, but you can use a AA battery, and this would drop it down to about 0.5 lumens with a 7 day runtime, which is significantly longer and less bright. The Lumentop EO5C has a 4 lumen output mode with a max runtime of 35 hours. This mode is slightly overpowered, but it's not as bad as some of the other lights, and it's still pretty comfortable to look at. The auxiliary lights have a 3 lumen output mode and a 35 hour runtime as well, and this mode is a little better suited for this task, but it's still slightly overpowered. The Sofern SP10 Pro has a true moonlight mode with a 1 lumen output and a max runtime of 120 hours, and this is one of the most efficient and discreet lights in the lineup, and this is definitely one of the best suited lights for this task. The Convoy T3 has a 1% output mode, which should be about 3 lumens, and there are no max runtime stated, but this mode looks like it would last at least a few days, if not longer, and it's just enough light to see the pages comfortably without straining, and it's very similar to the Sofern light. The Olight i5R EOS only has two modes, and the lowest is a 15 lumen mode, which runs for about 37 hours. And this is definitely more light than you need for an up close task like this. And it would be nice to see another mode added or this output to be slightly reduced. The Lumentop GTA has a 10 lumen low mode with a max runtime of 48 hours. And this output will ramp down and is overpowered for this use case, but considering it's a thrower, it's not bad and could still be used for reading in a pinch. Normally the size and weight of these lights might not be that important to you, but since these are all lights that are pretty much designed for pocket carry, I wanted to give you guys a breakdown of the lengths of these lights and their weights and ounces, not including batteries, and for the most part there isn't too big of a gap in the lengths and the weights of these lights. The Lumentop GTA is the longest in the lineup due to its wide head, and it's probably the least pocket carry friendly. The Lumentop FWAA is the shortest light, and it's also the most lightweight. 
so if you want a light that disappears in your pocket, this is one of the best options. The Lumitop Antman is the heaviest light in the lineup. Alright, so now that we've seen all these lights and checked out their performance, we're going to briefly talk about price. The Lumitop FWAA is available at Neil's Gadgets with a ton of different emitter options for $45.95 and this does not include batteries so you'll also need to factor in a few more bucks for something like a vape cell h10 but if you use the coupon code urban survivor you'll get 15 percent off and drive the price down to about 3906 not including shipping while it is one of the more expensive lights in the lineup it's clearly an excellent performer and it's a very popular and positively reviewed light and it could be one of the best all around the Ace Beam Rider RX is available for about $44 on Amazon, so it is slightly on the more expensive side, but it does include a battery and free shipping if you have Prime. And the performance of this light was definitely pretty good, and it's definitely one of the more durable lights with the best build quality, which does help to justify the price and could be a good option if you tend to be more rough on your EDC gear. The Lumitop EO5C is available at Neil's for $39.95 without a battery, but the coupon code will drop it down to $33.96 which is a pretty good deal. This is one of the most versatile lights in the lineup, and my only gripe with this is the micro USB charging, and it's gonna be one of the best options if you like the capability of going hands-free. The Sofren SP10 Pro is an excellent budget-friendly option, and right now it's available on AliExpress for $23.99, including a battery, which is a really great deal. And if you don't wanna spend too much money, but you still want an excellent light, this is definitely the one you should go with. The Convoy T3 is the most budget-friendly option, coming in at around $16. And as you can see, there's a ton of different emitter options and color temperature options, which is really cool. And something that I hope to see more flashlight brands adopt. I really like the warm light, but the other options are good too. And if there's a specific color temperature or LED that you really like, you should be able to find it in some configuration of the T3. The Olight i5R EOS is priced in the middle of the pack at about $36, but you might be able to get a good deal on it during an Olight flash sale. It seems reasonably priced and does include a battery. And if you like Olight and want to keep it in the family and also want a light that's on the floody side, this is not a bad choice. The Lumintop GTA is also available at Neil's and with the coupon code, and a vape cell battery we're looking at about $42 which is not a bad deal if you need a compact little thrower the only downside of this light is that its head is pretty wide compared to the rest of the lights here so it will be less pocket carry friendly but if that doesn't bother you then this is a pretty good deal finally we have the Lumitop Ant-Man Thor Mini also available at Neil's Gadgets and it is the most expensive light in the lineup but I do have a special coupon code for LEPs which is ND25F and it will save you 25%, which brings the total down to $89.97 with a battery. If you want a pocket LEP, this is definitely one of the smallest ones on the market. But if you don't mind carrying something a bit larger, you should check out some of the other LEPs like the Thor 1, the Thor 2, or the new Mate Minko FW2, because many of them can throw significantly further. The Ant-Man is also not the most practical light, but maybe if you also carry another light that's better suited for short to mid-range distances, the Ant-Man could be a good supplement at further range. Thanks so much for watching the video, and if you enjoyed it and you want to see more flashlight comparisons like this one, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and comment down below, and let me know which of these 14500 lights is your favorite, and if there's a light that I missed that you really like, you can let me know about it down in the comments below.